Hey friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, literally, this does not work, and I'm being honest with you because, see, my man here, Leon, die-hard Dallas Cowboy fan, you know, I'm always busy, always running around, and sometimes I miss stuff. So Leon is forever, just like Mark over in um, England is always sending me a link and saying, Mark, did you see this? Mark, did you see this? So, and a lot of times I'll say, yeah, did you see my video about that? But um, I'm over at Leon's house. Leon, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, soon he's going to be over at the man cave for some games and stuff. Leon is on the men and things, so thoughts and prayers go out to you, of course. But we were having a little discussion here about the difference of this game versus, say, the week before. Um... In your mind, what do you think were the biggest differences with the play of Dak Prescott between last week and then, of course, this, this past game? Well, I can honestly take you back to the beginning of the season. And everyone is everyone keeps talking about, you know, what Dak did, what Zeke did. You know, we're not, because we haven't seen that this year, we're hyped up on that. But you got to go back to where this team, where how this team was built, and that's the offensive line. If you pay attention, any time that they give Dak the adequate amount of time, then Dak does his thing. You know, he can he can get the ball out. The receivers are coming out of their break. I think the biggest thing for us is Joe Looney and Connor Williams getting that getting that thing together right there. That solidifies the line again. Every week they're getting better and better and better. That gonna have everybody hanging off of him, trying to throw the ball and throwing the ball out. It, you know, it it's that's that's the way this team is built. And now, now uh, hold on. Now, now I'm gonna play the contrarian here. What about the people that say that Dak Prescott has had more time than average to get the ball out? Absolutely not. Look at him. Look at him. Pay attention to what he's doing. Just pay attention to what he's doing. When he has an adequate enough time, he can do it. Yeah, he missed passes here and there. All quarterbacks do. But when you've been razzled like he has, I probably miss a few too. I'm not perfect. Everybody keep talking about you know, he should be here. This is his third year. We're talking about a fourth round, third round pick. Give the man a break. Give him a break. Well, a lot of people are ready to go ahead and say, we need to start over. You know, he's not the guy. His mechanics are off. Um, he is a fourth round draft pick and stuff that we need to package up and move up and go ahead and grab a quarterback. Um, I look at it right now and say, there's no guarantee that doing that is going to get your quarterback. Right. Uh, you know, we looked at getting Paxton Lynch. We thought about maybe even trying to get Carson Wentz. We were lucky enough to get him in the fourth round where we didn't have to use a lot of picks and trade up. I mean, look at Cleveland. How long has Cleveland been looking for a quarterback? Now, Baker Mansfield, you know, he had a good game, uh, you know, a couple of picks and stuff, but, you know, he looks like he might be, be decent. You look at the Washington Redskins, how long have they been looking for a quarterback? Exactly. Uh, so it's not one of those things that there's a whole lot of. To me, in my mind, he's had some some success. I mean, I don't remember a stretch where Tony had that many wins back to back. Right. I, I, I can't. I don't believe Tony Romo had back to back winning seasons, did he? Not Under that. Jason Garrett. In fact, Jason Garrett's only had one back to back winning season in his career. Um, hypothetically, let's say the team goes nine and seven or ten and six. Do you think we need to start thinking about another quarterback? No. I think we need to start thinking about another head coach and offensive coordinator. What I would honestly like to say, because he, here's where you look around the NFL. What amazes me is Andy Reid. Okay? Andy Reid hasn't won the big one. But look at the quarterbacks that he has developed. The Eagles weren't happy about them drafting Don McNabb, but he made Don McNabb a really good quarterback, didn't he? Absolutely. Um, you look at what he's done with Alex Smith. Alex Smith was thought to be a bust when he was with the 49ers, yeah. right? And, you know, yeah, Alex Smith got, what, a $100 million contract after being underneath him. You look at what uh, Mahomes is doing right now. You know, 
yeah. with it. So it seems like no matter who he has as a quarterback, he develops them. You can't tell me that he's just been lucky enough to have great quarterbacks when you looked at the track record of these guys before they were with him. Yes. That, to me, is coaching, and that's the kind of coach that you need to need. And I'm not saying we need to hire Andy Reid because – I don't know that he's going to go anywhere from Kansas City. Just although somebody that can coach back up. But there's some guys that work better with it. And if you... Michael Anthony's agreeing, I believe, too, right? No, golf. Well, golf, yeah. Jared Golf, definitely. That's another big <laughs> one. No, you know, because... Well, yeah, think about Jared Golf when, he, you know, under Mike Fisher, who was considered, you know, a, a good coach and things. You know, he went to the Super Bowl with uh, McNair, so you figure that he'd be able to do something. If he couldn't get him to go, and as Tony, as uh, Troy Aikman said, you know, Jared Goff couldn't throw the ball 25 yards downfield and didn't think that this guy's an NFL quarterback. A change of a coach that worked with them and found out his strengths. To me, what I think would be a great thing with Dak, he looks so much more comfortable in no huddle. Start using it. That was one of those things when you looked at the K-Gun, for those of you guys that aren't old like me, that was the Buffalo Bills offense with Jim Kelly. They basically went no huddle all the time, and they were killing people with Jim Kelly doing that. And that's what the coaching comes in, where you've got to find wrinkles that give you an advantage. You can't just rely on your talent and saying, we're just going to line up with the best offensive line of football and run Zeke Kelly and expect to win all the time. Teams are going to figure out how to combat it. And even with, the, the, even with, with you know, the way that our line has been blocking, Zeke ain't even really been getting off. And he's still leading Killed it in the NFL. So now the line seems to me that they're starting to jail a little more and a little more every week, which is going to make this offense start cranking up. So now you're going to start seeing what we're really made of. Well, the other, and also, too, one of those things people don't think about as well. You know, everybody wants to see the 400-yard passing games and things like that, see all the deep balls and stuff. But what that ends up doing is actually making the games longer where there's more plays because the clock is stopping every time there's an incomplete or every time a guy goes out of bounds. What you're noticing, and um, the Lions ended up basically saying as well, is listen, we didn't have that many plays because the game went through quick. And you start looking at it and seeing where, I think against Carolina, I think we had 55 plays. Because you're killing the clocks, so you're keeping the ball away from the other team. And that's one of those things that when I say depth by a thousand cuts, <coughs> when you start mixing the ball around and hitting from left, right, and all that, and keeping the ball in bounds, it's keeping the ball away from the other team and not giving them opportunities to score. And that, my friends, is what you really got to do when you're playing a guy like Aaron Rodgers. You don't want to be three and out and take no time off the clock. That is the way to win. It's not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. You're not going to see three 400-yard games from Dak Prescott because it's a ball control offense. Who cares about that if you win in any way? Well, that's the bottom line to me. And there's not anybody out there who's going to run away with this. I mean, I know the Rams are looking great. I know right now the Chiefs are looking great. But remember, they started out 5-0 and last year and ended up then going 5-6. and It's a long season, so hold on tight. So, Leon, I told you I was coming for you, brother. <laughs> and I'm here for you. So, with that being said, i got to go on to the next stop. The day ain't over, but we'll be here with any other news on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes with Michael Anthony Fitness and, of course, Leon. I'll see you soon.